Here is the formula to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity, where payments are made at the end of a period, with all the variables listed. We're going to go through how to input this formula into Excel. As an example, let's say that someone deposits $3,000 at the end of each year for four years into an investment earning 7% compounded yearly. What is the future value of the annuity? One note, to use this formula, the interest compounding periods must match the payment or deposit periods. For instance, yearly, semi-annually, or quarterly. This is extremely important. I've listed all the variables with their amounts, as you see on the screen, so we can reference them when we enter the formula into a cell. We're going to put the answer in cell B8, so I left click on cell B8 so it's highlighted. Next, type in an equal sign. Then, following the formula, we left click on the payment or deposit amount, cell B2. From here, we type in a multiplication sign, which is Shift 8 on the keyboard. Next, we type in four open parentheses, and then we type in a 1. From here, we type in an addition sign, then another open parentheses. Next, we need to left click on the interest rate amount, cell B4. Then we type in a division sign, which is a forward slash on the keyboard. Now we need to left click on the number of deposit periods per year, cell B6. We use the number of deposit periods because as you'll see in future examples, where the deposit periods and compounding periods do not match, we'll adjust the interest rate to get them to match. Next, we type in two closed parentheses to close off the R over N portion and the 1 plus R over N portion of the formula. From here, we type in the to a power symbol, called a caret sign, which is shift 6 on the keyboard. And then we type in an open parentheses. Next, we left click on the number of deposit or payment periods, cell B6. Then we type in a multiplication sign and then we left click on the number of years, cell B3. Now we type in two closed parentheses to close off the n times t portion and the 1 plus r over n raised to the n times t portion of the formula. Next, we type in a minus sign, then we type in a 1, followed by a closed parentheses, which closes off the top part of the fraction in the formula. From here, we type in a division sign, again a forward slash, then type in an open parentheses. And next, we left click on the rate, cell B4, then type in a division sign. Now we left click on the number of deposit periods, cell B6. Next, we type in two closed parentheses to close off the bottom part of the fraction and to close off the entire fraction. From here, we hit the Enter key and we have our answer of $13,319.83, which is the future value of the annuity. Now we're going to go through an example where the deposit or payment periods do not match the compounding periods. Let's say this time that someone deposits $3,000 at the end of each year for four years into an investment earning 7% compounded quarterly. What is the future value of the annuity? The only thing that's changed from the previous example problem is that there are four compounding periods per year. So I'm going to list the variables with the amounts with that one change. As I stated earlier, to use a formula, the interest compounding periods must match the payment or deposit periods. To solve this problem, we need to convert the interest rate to the effective interest rate. So I'm going to add that variable to the list. Here is the formula to calculate the effective interest rate with all of the variables listed. We're going to enter this formula into cell B19. So we left click on cell B19. Next, we type in an equal sign, followed by two open parentheses. From here, we type in a 1, followed by an addition sign, then another open parentheses. Next, following the formula, we left click on the rate, cell B16. Then we type in a division sign, and then we left click on the number of compounding periods per year, cell B17. From here, we type in two closed parentheses, followed by the to a power symbol, a caret sign, again, shift six on the keyboard. Now we left click on the number of compounding periods, cell B17, and then type in a closed parentheses. Then we type in a minus sign, and then the number 1. Next, we hit the Enter key, and we have our answer of 0 .071859. And now we're ready to enter the ordinary annuity formula, which I've done already. The only difference from the first example is that we're using the effective interest rate in place of the annual interest rate. So the formula is written the exact same way, with only that difference. I'll hit the Enter key, and we have our answer of $13,356.54. You can see that this value is greater than the first example, 
and that is because of the extra compounding periods. In both of the previous examples, the deposits were yearly. So we're going to do one more example, and this time the deposit periods will not be yearly. So this time someone deposits $500 at the end of each month, again for four years. The yearly rate is 7% and it is compounded quarterly. What is the future value of the annuity? To do this, we have to first convert the interest rate to the effective interest rate, then second, convert it to the nominal rate. Here again is the formula to convert it to the effective rate. And here is the formula to convert the effective rate to the nominal rate. I put in the formula for the effective rate in cell F7. As you can see on the screen, it's the same formula as the last problem. I hit the Enter key, and we get the same value as in the last example. Now we need to input the formula for the nominal rate. We're going to enter this formula into cell F8. So we left click on cell F8. Next, we type in an equal sign, and then we need to left click on the number of compounding periods we need to be at, which is cell F6, not cell F5. From here, we type in a multiplication sign. From here, we type in three open parentheses. Then, following the formula, we type in a one, then type in an addition sign. Next, we need to left click on the effective interest rate, cell F7, and then type in a close parentheses to close off the one plus effective interest rate portion of the formula. From here, we type in a caret symbol, or to a power symbol, shift six on the keyboard, and then we type in an open parentheses. Next, we type in a one, followed by a division sign, and then we need to left click on the number of compounding periods we need to be at, which is cell F6, because we need the compounding periods to match the deposit periods. Next, we type in two closed parentheses, followed by a minus sign. Then we type in a 1. Then we type in a close parentheses to close off the formula. From here, we hit the Enter key, and we have our answer of 0 0.069-595-591 as the nominal rate. And now we're ready to enter the formula, which I've already done. The only difference from the previous examples is that we're using the nominal interest rate that we calculated from the effective interest rate in place of the annual interest rate. So the formula is written the exact same way with only that difference. I'll hit the Enter key and we have our answer of $27,581.86. There are actually different ways to calculate problems like these, but this is the one that I found the most useful. All right, my friends, hopefully you got something out of this video. I do have sh sh more videos right there for you. Till next time, I am out of here.